welcome to Tuning In with uh, myself and our new host, Andrew Pupo, featuring our guest, Safe Sanwal. And what did you bring? Special for, guest. What did you bring Special for us today? Guest. Hey, I bought myself a new car today, Is boys. that a Mazda CX-9? Hey, don't be dissing my Ford like that, all right? Don't be dissing my Ford. Oh, it's a Range Rover. Well, I'm, uh, I'm a guest today because uh, I'll be leaving for, for a couple of weeks. I'm going to the Dominican Republic. I have a house down there that I'm building. It's uh, my father's retirement slash something for the family. And uh, we got, you know, we got a pretty, we got, we got stuff built. First level is built. And I'm going down to work on the kitchen and the outside and put some cameras in. So I'll be leaving this Friday. And uh, Shit, this already, is why I'm eh? the special guest today. So oh, I won't wow. be here. I won't be doing the next couple of episodes with... We'll miss you. For Maybe I'll sure. join in from over there. I don't yeah, know. we can have can a little. We'll have a little iPad there for you. Yeah, and just put Maybe. you there, right beside. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So, uh, what did it take to get this Urus? Oh, the Urus! Oh man, this is. Uh, it's actually a dream come true. For, like you know, it's like every, every man. You know, when you're young, like. Everyone has a car that they was like, holy shit, if I could, maybe how, like, it's not even, it's not even like a dream. It's just like, like, it's like, what the fuck? It's not possible, you know? It's crazy, mm -hmm. actually. So to be, to be, uh, to be a, a, um, a owner of a Lamborghini is, I don't know, it's pretty cool. It hasn't really settled in because I've only had it for a couple of hours <laughs> and uh, it's been pretty treacherous to go get it and emotions have been all over the place but maybe I think I'll wake up tomorrow and look outside and go oh shit I did it it happened so it's uh, I'm yeah. proud of you thank you my brother. Yeah, me man. too hard work from knowing you for what 15 years now yeah since the I, flea market you know I was telling <laughs> Julian I have to be very honest and I think this is just something like you get older or I don't know what it is. Maybe life is just not, maybe life is more fun when you're young. Um, but when I picked up my RSX, that feeling I had. Dude, I remember that car. You remember that thing? I that remember thing was that cool, car. Man. Silver little RSX. And uh, I remember when I picked up a RSX, man, that was, it was uh, about two years old. And uh, a car, I, when I got it from the dealership, that feeling I had, man, that was, that was something else. So as a great, I mean, Hey, I'm super excited for the Lamborghini, but there's something special. I think when it's like your first, or like you know those those early those early years. I don't know how to quite. I don't know if you guys have that. You guys have like what oh, was yeah. the car that made you literally wet your panties? What wet your panties were you back then? Yeah, when I first got my first car, it was a 240. Man, that was the like that, that was, was the, the shit. that was my car, man. Yeah. I wanted that car. I mean, well, technically the dream car way back then still is the. R34 GTR. So that made you go wild. You guys have high standards. Oh, yeah. R34 GTR, Anything man. Anything without a muffler. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. <laughs> no, but Come like, on, what was Anything that first car that made you go crazy? Like, what was the first car? Uh, like, my first car? No, that, that car that when you got in it and realized it's yours and you drove away, like, you couldn't stop freaking giggling, dude. My, you were just like, My, my 2006 straight-piped Honda Accord. Really? Yeah, man. Like it did it for you. Oh, yeah. How old were you? 19. Yeah. So see, it's, it's Shit, a, that was three years ago. It's a... It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't aged Hey, a I bit. like this new host. <laughs> He's a lot better than the last one. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, we ha we had to get lost. rid of him, you know? Yeah, okay. So, hey, yeah. congratulations. I'm happy for you guys. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Uh, so, yeah, I, uh, I traded in the R8. You know, the R8 is history. Um, yeah, I'll miss that car. I'm gonna miss that car. Yeah, that, that, car, that was, was to, uh, that car was fun to drive. Yeah, and well, well, my my fucking Instagram name is R8 Sandwall. What know, do I do with that? You have to train it to say you're a Sandwall. No, man, this just doesn't sound right. <laughs> Sandwall your ass. <laughs> 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 Sounds good to me. Yeah. So, uh, as you guys know, it, it's it's a funny story. So when I bought the R8, what happened was we had a customer, you know, yeah, the yeah. black R8. Uh, we yeah. had a customer bring. She brought her R8 in, and mm -hmm. she, this this she's she's badass. By the way, Leslie, if you're listening, you're badass. Um, she just rolled up. Like, she had, a, I think, a Land Rover in here. And she just rolled up, like, zoomed right into the parking lot. Jumps out of this beautiful black R8. And we're like, uh, what's that? Check out, that's my other car. And she threw her, like, she gave us something, like a wheel lock, and just, like, drove right off. And I was like, oh, my God. I love that car. This is how I fell in love with the R8. Like, I, I took that car seriously. And then uh, I, I told her, I was like... Like, I need to work on your car. So 
the next time she brought it, gave it in for an oil change. That was the first time I worked on an R8. I loved it. I loved every part of it. I drove it, and I was like, oh, my God, I'm in freaking love with this car. Cupcake phase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was done. So I literally spent six months maybe maybe five months looking for the right r8 i did not want to pay what they're worth and i went and checked a couple out finally uh there was a dealer uh a dealer put it up for sale they put it put it up at the same price as a v8 but this was a v10 manual and they put it for 100k so i saw that on a friday i called them first thing saturday and they're like yeah we have it here we're open i'm like say no more and it was oakville and it just woof, I flew down there, bro. I How was walked. the drive back? Huh? How was the drive back? Well, I, I didn't buy this. I didn't get it the same day. Come on. I don't have special privileges like you, okay? <laughs> you just walk in and they're like, oh, <laughs> Lyndon is here. The Lyndon, the car god. It's right away. Th this way, sir. No, that doesn't work for me, okay? And um, anyway, so I, I, I bought this. Uh, I wa It was funny. It was quite funny because I walked in. I was like dressed like shit. I, I was having fun, you they know? They were probably like, oh, sir, you're in the and wrong And nobody place. wanted to talk to me. <laughs> and like, I'm looking at this car and like the sales guys are like kind of, you know, like, look at this, look at this fool. Like, no one's taking me seriously. And then some young sales guy came over and he's like, hey, what's up, man? I'm like, bro, this car's beautiful. He's like, oh, yes, it is. I'm like... How much is it? He goes, 100K. I'm like, is there any accidents on it? He goes, no. I'm like, okay, so let's do the deal. He's like, oh, well, really? I'm like, yeah, I'm here, to, I'm here to buy this thing, man. And he was like, oh, right away, sir. Come this way, sir. So he goes, I sat down, made the deal happen, and then everyone was just like, oh, shit, this, this young guy, this guy is serious. And uh, I, w I went back and I picked it up a week later. And um, so now the yours... I also got it from a, uh, uh, um, a Chrysler dealership mm -hmm. and the used car manager was the same guy from the other dealership who really? sold me the R8. No way. So when he saw me, he's like, Funny. oh, you again? You serious? He's like, you again? Wow. And he wanted to only give me a hundred. So the, you know, the R8's gone up in price. Like, dude, in the summer, they mm -hmm. were selling for 155, 165, yeah. like crazy. Mind you, there were a lot less mileage on those yes. ones. And honestly, I just looked... I'm done with the car. You know, uh, I love the car, but there's a certain point you hit where you're done. Yeah. Like this whole year, I think I didn't even put 500 kilometers on it. I didn't take it anywhere. I didn't really drive it. I just didn't want to, man. I just didn't feel it anymore. Mm -hmm. And it like part of the attention that like when you have a car like that, everyone likes to look at. I didn't want any of that. I just didn't feel right. You know? So... I kind of looked at it that if I try to get, like, you know, put it up on sale myself, I could probably get 130, 140, you know, maybe 140. But again, there'll be a lot of headaches, random people coming, test driving the car. I yeah. didn't want to go into all that mm -hmm. bullshit. So, you know what? We went back and forth, back and forth. I wanted 130 taxes in. They gave me 125. You know what? I just give them the keys and that's yeah. it. I'm out. It's nice and simple. So this car now... I had a customer bring their yours here a month ago, maybe. Was it a month ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe, a, maybe two months ago. I think two months in October. Yeah. yeah, it was. And he brought in his yours to, because he was grabbing something for his car. It was his father's. And I was like, yo, whose yours is I? Oh, it's my dad's. I'm like, damn, that thing's nice. Hey, do you mind just shoving it into the shop? I want to take some pictures. Like, I just did it for the gram, bro. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was cool. And then... Uh, it was inside the shop. I opened it. I sat in. I was like, holy shit. Like, this is, damn. Like, yo, something hit me. Like, that car hit me. Like, this is something insane. And then the next one, we had another one come in, like, maybe a couple of days later, a green uh, yeah. one. Yep. And mm -hmm. I was like, and the, I'm like, I I'm asking nice. the guy, like, yes. what do you do? He's like, I'm a realtor. And I'm like, yo, how do you afford this car? And he's like, bro, it's only $3,000 a month. How much are you paying for your ugly tesla i'm like yo like 1200 bucks and he's like would you rather have two teslas or one of these and i'm like shit <laughs> <laughs> so yeah man that did it for me so that idea snuck in there and i just kept looking at them and sooner or later i, I almost made a deal <laughs> I had on to the, pull the trigger <laughs> i almost made a deal on the on the one that was coming inside the shop he was selling it and the mileage just was really high and then i realized you know what i can't do this like Sometimes you got to let them like put the money away, right? Even my R8, I have, I've like when I first got it, 
I, I hated that it was beige inside. Low key, I didn't tell anybody, but I hated it. It's probably like one of the main reasons I wanted, I couldn't wait to get rid of it. Because mm -hmm. it's, you know, you're in there and you just, it's, it's, it's all you see. You know, it's beige. You don't see the outside, you see yeah, the inside. Yeah, it's beige. I hated that beige. It was ugly yeah. as, like, it's ugly. So I'm like, you know what? No, I can't do this. What do I actually want? I'm like, okay, I want a white yours because out of all the ones I've seen, the white to me just looks beautiful. It's a unicorn. There you go. A beautiful unicorn. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I want the inside to be orange and black. So I just waited till one came up and you there know what? Is. And there it is sitting right behind you. There it is. So finally, there's a lot of back and forth, a lot of emotions, but finally it's done, boys. And it, now it hasn't hit you yet. There is a Urus that is yours and yeah. it's sitting behind you. Feels good, right boys. Now. It's crazy. It's brought out this guy. You know what? I, I give Lyndon a little bit of that, a little bit of a, a pat in the back because he's brought out the, the old car guy that was in me. Mm -hmm. I kind of lost it a little bit. I could see that. Yeah. But Lyndon sparked yeah. something. I don't, I, I don't quite understand it. So I'm not telling him. It's because he's so That's, young. I'm a hype man. Yeah, he is. He is the hype man. Or it's he true. slips some shit in my coffee. And <laughs> Probably. I'm, just, I'm Probably all both. like, yo, Lyndon, what's up, bro? I'm all excited. I'm, I'm ready for shit. And, uh, but yeah, like, it's just, uh, I think since me and Lyndon been working together, it, it's nice to kind of have a guy who's like, I'm definitely, you know, when there's good energy around you, it pushes you harder. So to see like Lyndon has such good energy, he's willing to just put it in there. And I'm like, man, I got to do better. It makes me want to do better. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I even see like what Andrew's been doing the last two months now. He's like a machine, you mm -hmm. know? So actually we didn't even, like, screw the years. Let's talk about Andrew. So Andrew is our shop foreman at the Pickering Auto Lab. And you are a blessing, my man. I you try. Know? You don't understand Sometimes maybe I don't show it. Sometimes maybe it doesn't come out or whatever, but how much I truly appreciate you. Yes. Like from the bottom of my heart, my brother. Because before you came in, my life was very, very hectic. Mm -hmm. I had to be the shop foreman. I had to be the top technician. I had to do problem solver. I had to do customer service. I had, I mean, come on, I, I, I can keep going. And I, not that I, like it, it's part of business. You have to. But the thing is that, you know, and originally when I started the shop here in 2015, it was only like four of us. So I had Nick work the front desk. I used to run the back. There was like three or four guys here. I mean, and, and, and now that I, I think about it, I'm, I'm like blown away. How? Like, how were we managing things? But we were getting things done. Mm -hmm. And obviously we weren't as busy. Yeah. And, um, but you know what? It's like I did my part. The other guys did their part. I used to, you know, work a lot of hours, work late, sometimes come like at night and work. Like it's just, it was what it is. And, um, you know, then it got bigger. I think 2017 was the first time I tried a sh shop foreman out. You know, I, I hired a, a, a guy who was skilled and, um, you know, but we just didn't see eye to eye. You know, it, I think the problem is a lot of shop foremen, they don't, they struggle with managing the shop, but also that they have to do work themselves. Like, they have to understand that I'm a licensed technician myself. I don't need that. I can stand and just watch everybody, you know, but a shop foreman is somebody that's like motivates the guys, wants to help the guys, wants to be a leader, like cares, you know, and, and part of it is that they're like, what I want is a shop foreman who says, hey, buddy, this is my shop. Get out of here. Like, I don't mind being told that. I'm not that kind of boss that's like, it's my way or the highway. If you're a shop foreman, that means you're the leader. That's like your team. You're the guy who runs the shop. So then the minute I walk in here and start like, you know, having things my way, it's like, I'm in your house. So of course there is a amount of respect amongst each other, but still it's, it's gotta be like, hey, what's up? No, 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 I got it, don't worry. Like, you know, let me do my job. So. I've gone through, I think, three shop formats. There was three, yes. And it was just, you know, it was, it was different problems, but I would, just to keep it clear, not name names and get all personal, I just didn't see eye to eye, you know? And I remember when I brought you in, 
I think what was really good is that we we both have like a nice gentle side to us, you know, like we can just talk like and, you know, Andrew, I don't think there's ever been an instance where I had hate to or like I was, you know, like I had a hate towards you or, or I really didn't like that you did something. We, ne- we never <laughs> That's had <a> plus. that. <laughs> yeah. I don't ever remember like us fighting. No, I mean, sometimes, me and you always see eye to eye normally. Yeah, it's always, uh, maybe there's something there's I don't a bicker, like. There's a bicker here and there, yeah, but, uh, and it, it, but it's, it's, it's so it's in a productive, and already out. It's yeah. a productive bicker. And uh, I think, um, you know, I, it's just been nice to like have you come on board and start kind of, you know, managing things. And it's, and the funny thing is like how you are and how I am is so similar. I just like things getting done right the first time. I don't want to, I don't like comebacks. Yeah, I agree. And I think, I think you're a huge reason why we're doing so well. You know, that again, three of us are the managers here, right? We all have a management role and I love that we all see eye to eye. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, one of us is not like far this way or far that way. We're very similar. I like that if we know? do have something that we actually talk about it and yeah. we work things through. Yeah. Exactly, because otherwise yeah. if someone's holding something in and then, you know, you just gain that animosity and mm-hmm. yeah, shit starts going downhill. We yeah. may not always share the same opinion right away and mm-hmm. we're always willing to discuss yeah our opposing views yeah. and not take it personally. Yep. Like we talk, we listen, we move forward. Exactly. So why, why'd you get into automotive? I got into automotive because I, when was it? It was in high school. It was basically like the only thing I liked doing. So uh, just stuck in there with my, actually it was funny actually because in high school when I did get into automotive, it was, I was more doing fabrication work than anything. Mm-hmm. I wasn't actually doing mechanics. And for some reason, I thought that that's what being a mechanic was. So I thought that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. So I started what going mean, to- What do you mean by fabrication? Like metal these, working? Yeah, metal work. Welding? Welding. Like okay. Making, Monster garage. <laughs> kind of. We, we were putting a 454 big block inside go. of a bug. That's what I did in high school. Nice. So- uh, you know, I had to make everything by hand. Everything, every piece of metal was made by hand. Mm-hmm. And that's what I kind of thought at the time that mechanics was. And did you finish it? No, I didn't get to. It was sad. <laughs> Typical high school. Those, don't worry. The next year, someone right? else will finish I know, it. right? I don't even know what happened to that car. Either way, uh, when I started going to trade school, and I'm just like, so like, when do we get to make stuff? And they're like, you're not. And I'm just like, Shit. So what are we doing then? <laughs> like, you're going to fix cars. And I'm just like, oh, shit. I think I got into the wrong trade. <laughs> but I just stuck with it anyway. And it was yeah. uh, it was nice. It, you know, I got to learn a lot. Yeah. And uh, just kept going from there. And honestly, I was just really, I, I hated having to pay somebody to work on my own car. Mm-hmm. And that's what another big thing was, was I didn't like, I remember once my mom's car had to go to this shop because I didn't know what the fuck to do at the time. Yeah. And <laughs> the, the bill was like $1,200. I was just like, holy, my mom's like freaking out. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, what am I going to do? And I'm just like, why the hell can't I do that? That doesn't make sense. So I was like, I have to be able to do this. You know, it's funny that when I experienced that, it was, I remember is my mom had a Toyota Corolla. Yeah, hers was Toyota Camry. Yeah, yeah there you go. A Camry. See, and I remember taking it to this place for an alignment. And I'm like a smart ass kid, 17 years old. In I'm going to Centennial College. I'm learning about alignments. Yeah. Tow, <laughs> camber, you know. And the guy brings a car in and he's out in like 10 minutes. And I thought he didn't do shit. So I'm like, oh, wait, there's a problem. I remember learning about this in school. There must be a bad ball joint. We need to, you know, and I'm thinking all these, like, what I'm going to ask, tell the advisor. The guy goes, he's like, yep, sir, your vehicle's done. It'll be, you know, 120. And I'm like, uh, oh, it's already done? He's like, yeah. I'm like, so do you guys adjust, like, the toe? Or did you, like, you know, I'm asking these questions. He's like, uh, I don't know, man. Here's the sheet. And I look at it. It's all red. <laughs> Like all red, okay? The only thing they did was tow. So they did a quick tow out the door. And I'm like, bro, this is a horrible alignment. The, like the reason I brought it here is so you can, you know, fix everything. He's like, buddy, you want everything green? It's going to cost you more money. Probably eight, $900. And I'm like, Jeez. eight, 900? Bro, that's, 
you know what I mean? Like yeah. that was my experience as as being like that was me going to school at the time. I was working at a restaurant, so I was like in automotive, but I wasn't actually working in a shop. Mm-hmm. And I was still kind of it was a lot of wow, I guess. Yeah. And you know, being seventeen, dumb, you don't know. But that was the experience I had. I was like, man. And you're like, why can't I do this? Yeah, I'm What's- like. I'm yeah. like, man, I can't wait till I'm in the shop. And then, yeah, obviously, when I started working in the shop, I did my own alignment. I was like, oh, this. <laughs> start realizing bastards. all the seized parts. That's, that's why, why it took. It cost that's so why much. it took ten minutes. Yeah, because yeah, like, they only did this. <laughs> two second toe out yeah. the door, man. Like, and th- th- this is something like that's part of. Uh, this is kind of the things that you know we like to see some changes, man. Like yeah. from a mechanic to a mechanic, I know how you are. You actually truly care about your job. You're very diligent. You know, obviously there's times that, you know, there it gets busy and you, there's pressure on, you know, there's three, four cars waiting for you because like here you're the Mercedes guy. Yeah. So any Mercedes issues on your head. And if there's four bad Mercedes problems, there's some pressure on you. Like last week. Yeah. But at the end of the day, bro, <laughs> that's just, that's life. You know, I'm sure every job has some kind of pressure absolutely and uh if there isn't pressure there's no rush yeah like and i find i find definitely now there is a class uh, there's a class of technicians remember our our uh our license on the test it's the funniest things they ask they're like technician a A, says technician a technician b the wheel bearing will make noise when you do this you know, technician B says the other side will make noise on a wheel. You know, like they ask you like tech A, tech A is dumb, tech B is smart. Who's right? Who's wrong? And I actually think our industry is now becoming the tech A and tech B. And yeah, it'll be more like almost. mechanic A, which is like your old school parts changer. You know, great, mm-hmm. great guy. He can change parts, eyes closed. And now it's becoming technician B, who's like knows electrical, understands land systems, network systems, understands programming, modules, communications, like, you know, like real hardcore grunt work, like technical work. And, uh, you know, it's, our, our industry is changing. Our industry is changing a lot. Let me ask you though, when you were in the, in the shop doing all that stuff, did you enjoy doing that? I loved it. Did you you enjoy the problem solving? Yes. That's what I enjoy most, honestly, is being able to figure something out and, especially when it's all in the wiring, it's networks and this and that. And yeah. being able to finally come up with that answer, like, ha ha, I got it. Yeah. You know, that's like the, it's the greatest, greatest for, feeling. For me, when I started at the dealership, um, I was obviously the youngest guy. There was other young guys with me, but they, they, they weren't going to school. And my like high school background was computers. I love computers. You know, I, I built my own computer at home. Like that's, I have my background. And um, when I got into a dealership working as an apprentice, you know, nobody else wanted to do remote start, so remote starters, yeah. uh, weird wiring issues. And I was hourly. So they'd be like, oh, this guy likes it. Give it to Take him. Take it. Yeah. And no one would care. I'd be on this car for like hours and hours and hours. And it was like a bad light bulb. You know what I mean? But oh, yeah. I'm, I'm overthinking it. I put a new light bulb in. I, I remember I had this car. I had this Sienna. The customer had put the wrong, like a single filament and when it should be a filament. double filament. Yeah. And it blew all kinds of shit. Like, dude, a bulb. And I remember I had this car fully apart. Nobody wanted to touch it. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, you want to work on it? No, bro, you take actually, it, take it, take it. I actually it. have a similar story to And uh, yeah, like I ripped this whole thing apart, replaced, da, da, da. And dude, I... You know, that car, I was on it for the whole week. And man, I fixed it. Like, it was the amazing, <laughs> greatest feeling ever. I you fixed put the right bulb in? I put the right bulb in. And I put a new module, this I'm and that. To, new- I'm trying to think right now if uh, <laughs> if that was here or if that was my prior shop. But I had a Lexus come in with uh, the, the whole left side taillight. wasn't working. Mm-hmm. I ended up ripping all the interior out, trying to trace harnesses because I wasn't getting power. I couldn't read power up at the taillight. And uh, it turned out it was just a bad bulb. <laughs> and it was the same kind of deal. They put a single filament yeah. where the dual was, where like, the dual was yeah. and it was it was arcing or it was uh, shorting out. Shorting out, yeah. Because it was right between the two points. Yeah. And it was just messing everything up. And yeah. it was literally just the simplest thing. And I just, you know, you spent five hours ripping interior out and this and that. And yeah. that's but all that's- it was, right? But... That's what it is. Yeah, Honestly, it is. I was that learning, is what man. It is. I was learning. I, I'll be. I literally had no clue what I was doing. It was just, and nobody else wanted to work on it, so they gave it to me. And I have all these. When diagrams. did you start working on cars? I started right out of. Uh, 
So I, I went I, right after high school. I went to college at Centennial, and then after my first year. So after high school, so after you're high school, 17, I went 18. directly. Yeah, I went 17. I went to Shit. Centennial. I, I, um, I went into the two year course full oh, yeah. time. Yeah. And um, after the first year, I was still working at the keg. So I, I, I love cooking. I was enjoying it. And then I Chef realized, mm -hmm. I realized, okay, mm. a year in, okay, I, I need to work on. Uh, I'm actually pretty hungry right now too. <laughs> <laughs> but, so my second year in school is when I started working uh, in a loop pit. Just did a bunch of oil changes for a year. Got really fucking good at it. And then I went and uh, got a job with Toyota. Shit. But I was being a dealer man. I worked once. Uh, outside of the dealer and it was and I wanted never, to kill I wanted to kill myself I've never worked at a dealer really ever. so never we're like once. the polar opposite yeah. dude I've never worked at a dealer I've worked at probably 15 shops holy in my, shit in my life what's the worst shop okay don't name names but what's the worst place like what was bad about it mm -hmm. worst place was just straight conditions it was floor uh, actually sorry <laughs> no the worst the worst place I worked was a spring shop I was there for a week like heavy duty spring shop? Heavy duty, like garbage trucks. Wow. Rings. Okay. You have to go down into a pit. And we, the first, my, f oh no, sorry. It was like the third day there. Yeah. Garbage truck comes in, springs broke. Got to replace the uh, leaf springs on the garbage truck axle. Wow. Okay. And they're big boys, no? They're, mm. Oh yeah, it's a garbage truck. It's a fucking full garbage truck, right? Yeah. Dude, let me tell you, we get down in the pits, jack the thing up, start torching the leaf springs off. And buddy who was torching hit something on the truck bed. Yeah. And the pit got filled up three, three, three feet of garbage juice and maggots. Oh. <laughs> garbage juice and maggots. Oh. Okay. Three, three feet tall. Yeah. It was the, I started like throwing up and it was <laughs> disgusting. Welcome to your new job. I literally got out of the pit took my clothes, like took my pants, I changed. I'm like, yeah, I'm going home, guys. <laughs> Did you come back? Nope. Did not come back. You don't miss that job? Nope. Sounds not at all. exciting, It dude. was the worst fucking thing ever. Yeah, that's pretty. I was like, I don't, I, I, I'm like, buddy, you, I'm like, is this the first time this has happened? He's like, oh God, no. He's like, this happens normally. And I'm just like. Yeah, this part of the I'm job. like, you still work here? <laughs> Some like, people yeah. enjoy like, that, like, man. It was, it, it was messed up because the one side of the shop was all garbage truck, dump truck leaf springs and the other yeah. side of the shop had like six hoists they were cars oh. and I'm like I got a job here to work on that side of the shop but they're like ah but we need you here right now <laughs> <laughs> that so, was the trick they yeah, show you the literally. nice side and then once you're in there oh like, my god buddy. hey was, come here you know, hey at the same time I still talk to the guy he's still yeah. a great the, the owner there he was a great guy yeah I still send people there on a you know if they need big dirty like he does full custom garbage springs trucks and, if you got a garbage truck hit him up he makes springs there. Like, he yeah, makes yeah. coil springs. He makes everything. I mean, oh, mine's pretty close to a garbage truck, so. He probably has some nice springs for your, your big truck that you just got. He, yeah. He, legit, if you want some springs, man, that guy's, <laughs> he's good, man. I love some big springs. I bet. Hey, you ever work for, like, an alcoholic? <laughs> oh, uh, I, I mean, yeah. Yo, this is real shop Yo, talk Yo, actually, right you know what? Yeah. My first legitimate job as a tech yeah. was out of my apprenticeship um, or sorry, not an apprenticeship. Uh, what was it? Co-op was at uh, Active Green and Ross. Mm -hmm. Me and the owner's uh, brother, who was the head tech there, me and him used to go every other morning. He, I don't know, for some reason, me and him became good friends. I was under his wing, you know, like I watched everything. I learned a lot of shit from him for, yeah. for real. He was a really good tech. Um, and me and him, every other morning, we used to go to a place where there was a bunch of uh, little crummy shops. And uh, he knew one of the guys there. And every other morning, we'd go there, say hi. And this guy would crack a bottle of vodka at 9 a.m. Yeah. And be like, yo, guys, you guys can't leave until half of it's gone. So... And we're like, what? I'm like, yo, man, I can't, I can't do this. I'm like, I got to go back to work. Yeah. And Buddy's sitting there like, ah, it's okay, you're with me. That was the owner of the place? The owner's brother. Oh. And he would he used to come to the shop. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's crazy. It's man. always the owner's brother. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you and know then, what? There's, <laughs> there's a lot to be said now, about let, that. Let me, let, me, let me get into this now. So 
we worked there. I worked there for two years. And after mm-hmm. two years, they went under. The owner couldn't pay anymore. We didn't get paid for two months. Aye. Wow. Two months straight, it was, yeah, you know, we're not doing great this month. So, you know, I'll try and get you guys paid next week. Yeah. Two months that went on. And eventually we're just like, that's it. We had enough. We came in one morning. Owner's brother came in. He's like, where's the, where's, uh, you know, where's so-and-so? Oh, he, like we thought you knew, you know, we don't know. And we got the phone call. Yeah, you guys can go home. He's like, we, we're done. Shut down. Oh, wow. Two days later, head office comes in, calls us all. Come on in. So we go in there. They paid us for the two months. Nice. Gave us cash. Wow. From this is green, corporate. Corporate, right? Gave us cash. Like, you know, hey, they even gave us an extra like $1,000 just for like a I'm sorry kind of no, deal. Don't sue us. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Head office took over the next week. It was fucking great after that. But I mean, dealing with the alcoholics and yeah. shit like that was crazy, man. Mm-hmm. It was Dude, crazy. I, I worked for a guy. Uh, every morning I came in eight o'clock and it was myself, a dumb kid, didn't know shit. And the owner would give me, I don't know what a two four was back at the time, maybe $30, 40 bucks, maybe 40 bucks. Every morning I would go to the beer store, grab a two four, bring it to the shop. And this then I get my day started and he would start nine in the morning. No way, man. All day That's... long, there was a bottle, 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 bottle. Jesus. Beer on the wall, you know, like it was everywhere. And he finished, every day he finished the whole pack. No way. Yeah. Every day I went. Holy and shit. I was, I was young, you know, I was stupid. I didn't understand what you was going on. You didn't get it, right? You are just like, yeah, I guess yeah, he's just, I just, he just likes his beer. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, oh, yeah, man likes his beer. And he was normal. Like he was a serious alcoholic. He was, now able, that he I was know, able to contain it. Yeah, he could yeah. contain it. Jeez. And it was just water for him. But the man would kill the whole thing. And Holy shit. Yeah, that that's was talent. that's definitely the worst place I worked at because uh, it was just really dark. I didn't know what I was doing. They didn't respect and they tried. They didn't, did, was there a head tech there? there no. It was just him. It was him and his brother. His oh. brother would run the front. And he was just working in the back and they expected me to do way more than I could. I just didn't know shit, man. Yeah. I was I was a lube guy coming from Toyota. I was really good at oil changes. <laughs> That's about <laughs> it. Like he told me to do a transmission. I was like, uh, uh you <laughs> did know. Did you do it though? Yeah, I did do it. Yeah, yeah. that's right. I got How long it did it take you? I don't really remember. <laughs> Three but- days. I remember I broke something on it too. I broke the shifter and I was like so scared I'm going to get caught. So I, I used tie straps. I made it work. And I was like, whew. I didn't tell, like, you know, and, and if part You're of- You're lucky I wasn't your foreman. For, yeah. <laughs> for me, it's, it's that journey, man. It's that journey, like going through certain things and then knowing that I don't want that. Like and that, knowing, you know what though? That's what makes, I think that's what makes you such a good tech is that yeah. you've been through all that crap. Yeah. And I mean, the same with me. I mean, you've seen the lowest of the low. And, yeah. It you know, can't get worse exactly. at that point. Yeah. And you can only make yourself better at that mm-hmm. point. You have to, because yeah. you don't want to end up at that point. Yeah. You don't. And it's it's crazy to know that people. Yeah, it is. Like, it, 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 sometimes and I that's think a about normal it. And for it, them. Yeah. It, it, it's mind boggling. Mm-hmm. Oh, the guy used to kill a two for every day. And the next morning, I would go around. Clean Get up all, the all of them, clean them up. I'm gone after the two. Yeah, I'm <laughs> more like oh, sleeping after two yeah, at nine man. in the morning. Yeah. Nine in the morning. Jesus wow. Christ! Wow. And, and hey, now that I think about it, the guy used to work. He'd be there ten at night sometimes. Like that's was that was his he energy to, to keep two going. He had to finish his two for. <laughs> and uh, crazy. but yeah, man, honestly, is uh, that's that's crazy. Some crazy shit. Yeah. Um. Well, sometimes I personally I see you guys working so hard on the floor, and I'm like, wow. I kind of wish I kept through with this, but my mm-hmm. experience working where I was before yeah, just drove you out. Yeah. I saw my coworkers and I was like, you know what, man, I don't want this. This isn't for me. You know, I don't, I don't think you're a tech. You're lucky though. You made like, that no, decision. You're just, now. he's not yeah. a tech though. No. Drew, me and Drew know this. Yeah. We see you can when see someone's a tech cutter. or yeah. someone's a not yeah. Yeah. like, dude, you're, you're doing very well for what you are. Like you mm-hmm. are, a, you you're are a ser- you're, you're a service advisor. You're a service advisor yeah. from maybe, the from the get go. Yeah, you like do you're, it or not, you're really good at taking care mm. of customers, yeah. and you truly you care. can talk to people. Yeah. Some no, people oh can't. Oh he cares. That's a ta- yeah, of course, but yeah. that's a talent on its own is being able to talk to people, make and them being understand. Able- yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because it's, some you take any of the guys in here, you try and tell them to go talk. Uh, 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 There's some days, man. You need where- to spend five thousand on your car. Why? Uh, 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 
Drew. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's hard, man. There are some days though when I when I when I deal with that and I'm like, oh man, I wish I was back there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's what, you know, some days I'm looking up front and seeing like, you were looking at that. I'm like, thank God I'm not up there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And sometimes you it wish happens. you were up there. Absolutely. Yeah. Sometimes I do. It's like sometimes yeah. it's like shit. I wish I was still up there. Mm. But that's the thing, right? Like it's uh, it's ups every, and downs, man. I think yes. for for myself, I always see if someone's gonna be a tech or not. Yeah. Right. Like. And I've gone, I've gone through a lot of guys, and mm-hmm. I always give everybody the benefit, the doubt, the one more straw, half a straw. Yeah, yeah you are the needle. Was, you know, before you came here, let me tell you, this guy, you a new hire. It was like there could be, you know, so many misses. Let's just say, <laughs> and say, man, let's just give him one more shot. And I'm me, me and Nick would sit there, be like, safe. We got it. We got to just let it go, man. We don't want it. We don't want to risk have a big else. heart, man. We don't want to risk it. I try to see the best in people. Yeah, that mm. was that was his. You know? I feel that was safe's biggest. True, you're still here. I am. You're right. <laughs> Even after that talk with Nick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> Either way, though. Yeah. No, but safe, safe's heart is just too big. <laughs> I know, man. Yeah, when but that's came, why there's a blessing came, here. There's a this, for that's sure. A, that's hey, a that's a big course. heart right there. Right? And, mm-hmm. I mean, hey, you're doing something right. Yeah. Right? So you know what? I'm not. I and I, I'll be honest, man. I, I've struggled with this for the last couple of months when it really kind of got you know like heavy, and uh, I question like, you know, why am I nice? Like, am I stupid? Am I just getting played by everybody? And then what it really came down to is I realized that to be nice. And of course, I can only work harder to be a better person because mm-hmm. I'm not there yet either. I have a lot of, I have things I have to work on, you know? And unless, until we realize that, we can't make ourselves better. Yeah. But I realize one thing, I do have a soft heart and that's a gift from God. Mm-hmm. You know, because I have a soft heart, I'm able to always listen to my customer. I've always, and my mentality is no different than when I was in the flea market. You know me from the food yeah, market. I do. If you complained, I was like, yeah, no problem. Here's your money. Have a nice day. There wasn't nothing personal. There wasn't, oh, I can only do in-store credit. I just didn't care. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're not happy? Here you go. Take your money. Get out of here. Mm-hmm. Because I knew, and this for me, this is just what I learned from my, my father. Yes. Take care of him, right? Don't give him a reason to have personal grudge or hate yeah. mm-hmm. and you just, get, he thinks he won. So I just give him his money, money. He's happy. Guess what? He needs something, he's coming right back. Mm-hmm. So in the long run, you don't lose. The way you dealt with the guy whose engine you stole, beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh yeah, that was a good one this week. I heard. <laughs> oh I heard my god. Heard about what? Exactly. What exactly. What that was. <laughs> I I, I couldn't believe it. You know, he called me about that, yeah. and I and I just I was just like, yeah, right, okay. No, that no, was no, definitely. Yeah. That was definitely the worst. Definitely top five worst <laughs> things that someone's told me. So we we had a, a Honda Odyssey in the shop and a customer literally came here, grabbed his car, came, comes back and goes, oh, you guys, no, actually, I don't know the whole story. What did he say to you? You have the wrong key or something? He said, this is not my car. This is not my engine. You guys stole my engine. And I said, excuse me, sir, are, yeah. you, are, you, are you serious? <laughs> I thought, like, I, I saw him go outside with the guy, right? And I know them two are kind of close. They've been, mm-hmm. you know, I was, I, but I know the guy. Like, I know him from yes. prior yeah, yeah. meetings, and he's really cool. Mm-hmm. So I went outside, and they're talking about an engine, and I was like, oh, that's definitely not your engine. <laughs> I just made it worse because I thought, I thought this was You a, said that? I thought it was a joke. <laughs> oh I thought they God. were joking. That's why. That's probably what got it so much no, worse. No, the guy was. No, no, no. The, the, I don't think that mattered. And then oh, when man. I realized I made a joke and everyone stopped and there was a ha ha ha. And then I was like, uh-oh. Uh-oh, shit. No one here is there, joking. There's something serious. No one's laughing. I'm the only idiot laughing. There's something wrong here. And then next <laughs> thing you know, I'm like, sir, what's wrong? And he goes, that's not my engine. That's not my engine. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I was so dumbfounded. I was like, what are you talking about? He goes, look, this is not my engine. Here's the key to my van. When my engine is back in, call me. I'll come pick it up. I'm like, Bro, relax. Let's let's tone it down. Let's relax. Let's talk about this because this is absurd. And I don't like to be that guy, but this went from like even my blood pressure went zero to 100 real quick because 
honestly, man, I can put up a lot. But when someone says I'm scamming, ripping them off, I'm a thief, like in, insinuating yes. that, I don't have any, like it's personal the patience now. patience is very yeah. limited. Yeah. It's personal. Like, I'm sorry, yeah, man. Absolutely. I'm a human being, you know. But if you if you come at me with love, if you're like, hey, man, I'm so disappointed that you guys took my engine. You know, I'm, I'm sad right now. I can't believe you. Yo, I'm on your side. I'm like, yo, 100%. what can I do to help? Like, Let's what? find that engine. <laughs> what, Let's yo, find your engine. Safe, safe yo, <laughs> yo, Linden, I need that engine back now, buddy. Like, Let's find it. You know, but when you come at me like Put that energy, right that energy is not going to work, right? So I was like, okay, let's slow it down. What's up? He goes, I'm like, sir, did you not just have an alternator done a week ago? He goes, yes. I'm like, bring me the light. Let's look down. Look at that alternator. Is it brand new? He goes, yes. I said, so this is your engine. No, you guys could have done that. I'm like, okay, great. Second, I'm like, look, it's a, it's your, I'm like, okay. You're not fooling anyone. Sir. Let's slow it down. So if I stole your engine and I put a new engine in your car, that would mean I would have to purchase an engine and put labor, two, three days of labor. Why into, would I do that? Into changing. What do I get out of a 2008 Honda, Honda Odyssey, Odyssey engine with 230,000 kilometers on it? I'm just trying to understand where he's coming from. Yeah. And that was not working. And then the last straw, he took out the oil dipstick and it's orange. You know, Hondas are orange. Yeah. This was yellow. And he just threw it at his engine. And he's mm. like, and he just stormed off. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so yeah, that was just uh, was a frustrating It was moment. so sincere though. The best thing for me was his wife. She was so sweet for him. She, she like took what he said and she stood right behind him. And in that moment, I was like, man, like I need myself a woman like that. Mm. Yeah, you know. Like, Did she had her? No, no, no. <laughs> but like, the amount of like absurdity of the situation, yeah. and she, she still stood, stood behind by him. him. Wow. The well, what, what was nice lady. is uh, the next Incredible. morning he did call to he apologize. Did. Oh, so did he? So probably yeah. just someone had a bad night. And I actually called him too the next morning. So mm -hmm. I called him just to apologize because I felt like I, was, I, was, I wasn't I was being myself too. Mm -hmm. And again, it's because, you know, you want to be professional. You want to care, man. You can't, you can't, you can't. You're going to be careful how you talk to customers. Yes. But if someone does make Absolutely. it personal, it's only human. Sometimes you lose your cool. And I lost mm -hmm. my cool. Not we I worked, didn't go we crazy well on it together. Cool in the situation. Though. Yeah, that's because just, it's crazy to for someone to just accuse you of something like that. Yeah, and I told him I said, why would we do that? I said, I sir, cool. let me yeah, bring you, in your. You're good at that, though. I told him, let me bring in your vehicle. There's a VIN plate number under on your yep. engine. Thank if God it God matches, God. then you know we're good. And I said, if you want, let's make a bet. I'll bet you ten thousand dollars right now that no one took your engine. And he, but regardless, it worked out. You know, and again. As frustrating as it was, the fact that he called the next day, apologized. I apologized to him, and we laughed. And I said, you know mm -hmm. what, my friend, we're all here together. We've had a tough year. I know you must be going through some stuff. Yeah. Everyone's going through some stuff, and I want to just apologize because you know what? At the end of the day, I really appreciate your business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I you don't want no bad. You don't want bad blood. You don't want bad energy. You know what? And again, I'm a huge believer. If there's a problem, if we can solve it, shut up, solve it. Let's get it over with. Yep. Because it doesn't make sense to argue and this and that. Like if someone comes in, then they're mad because their brakes are squealing, for instance. Don't argue. Put the car up. Put better brake pads. Put a different brand. If you put like, say, Techstars, you know Techstars are noisy sometimes. Put some Akibono in there. Pay the difference. Yeah. Don't bother asking the customer for more money because you should have done that from probably the beginning. Yep. And second, it's not worth it. Just get it over with. And this is something that I think a lot of, uh, you know, I, I want to bring other shop owners on the show just to kind of, you know, bounce these ideas. But I find from what I hear from customers a lot of times, a lot of these shop owners, they're not willing to do that. They get so personal. No, they, they're not. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are. Yeah. As soon as a customer complains, guys get so emotional. Bro, it's not about you. It's about the customer. If you want your shop to grow, you want you want to like move forward Put the customer first, not yourself. I, I honestly mean, I put my customer first. I put my employees second and I put myself last. Guess what? Because I know I'm going to win if I do A and B right. Mm -hmm. If the customers are happy, you know, if once in a while you have to spend some money, that's called like advertising. You know, in my head, that's advertising. If a car's in the shop and we break something, we break, break a $300 sensor, too bad. It is what it is. You know, we had that customer with the headlight. We had a Mercedes. Mm -hmm. You know, I know we didn't do it. 
but the customer is saying, hey, you guys messed up my headlight. You know what I told Lyndon, bro? Just get it over with. Yeah. They're such good customers combined. They both come here. They're always letting us, they trust us to do our job. So if there if there's a small issue, if it's going to cost us some money, just get it over with and get it like, fin you know, move forward. Mm -hmm. Because if you lose a customer like that, it's not worth it. Exactly. Right? But I find the biggest issue with a lot of shops, a lot of guys in our industry, they're so, they take it so personal. If you complain about your brakes, oh, were your brakes making noise when you left? Oh, you must drive stupid. You drive too aggressive. Bro, come on. Who cares? If someone's not happy with something you've done, at least give them, let them talk. Stop mm -hmm. getting so defensive. Put the car up and double check it. Mm -hmm. How many times have we caught our own mistakes? Because the truth is things happen. You're only human. We are self-aware, and I think that's why we progress so much farther than, than others. And it's not to sound arrogant or cocky, but we are self-aware, and we humble ourselves. Yeah. We, we take a look at the situation, and we think, did we do something wrong? Maybe. Yeah. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Like yeah. open-minded. Well, a yeah. lot of the time, yeah. too, though, I mean, and I credit you for that, is, yeah. is basically when you tell us, like, hey, you know what? I'd rather you get the job done right than rush through it and yeah. mess something up. And I mean, you know, a lot of shops aren't like that. A lot yeah. of shops are, yo, go, 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 go. And, you know, a lot of the time when you're rushing like that, quality yeah. quality is missed. Well, mm -hmm. I, and I know that from my own self. If Absolutely. I'm rushing myself, Again, things, we're, we're things only happen. human and things, ha exactly, yeah. things happen. Yeah. So to, to tell, it's great to tell employees like, hey, you know what? Slow down. Do it right the first time. Get mm -hmm. it done. Don't worry about time. Yeah, so what if it takes a little bit more time? That's Lyndon's job. Yeah. Let him explain to the customer, hey, you know what? We're trying to get stuff done correctly. You want us to do it correctly? Let us do our job. You think sh the shop foreman position is for every tech? No, it's not. I can tell Why you that, that right now. It's a lot of stress, for sure. A lot of stress. What Absolutely. kind of stress? Uh, just having to, having to know that if all your techs are doing their jobs correctly, knowing... You know, having always in the back of your mind, like, okay, well, you know, I know his strength is is not in this in this area, but I gave him that job anyway. Yeah, is is everything going to go correctly? Are things going to break? Mm -hmm. If they break, are they able to be fixed? Mm -hmm. Then when I go home at night, it's like, okay, well, now, oh, he did this, he did that, he did this. Yeah. Do you think everything got went went well? Am I going to get a phone call? You know, it's always it's always in the back of your mind, hundred mm -hmm. percent. Yeah. Um. It is hard for sure. It's not easy. Then, th and then on top of that, you got to do your own work and make sure everything mm -hmm. you do is proper. I think that's why having, and this is what I've emphasized with you too, Drew. If, if you know, it's important to have the right team. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, if, if you need to work with your your weakest link, for instance, you know, yeah. some of the. I mean, the truth is that in any shop, you're gonna have some the bottom apprentices. I was a bottom apprentice at one point. Absolutely. I graduated Me to too. be the kind of tech I am today. So I have to. Now that I'm in a position of, you know, authority in, in this, I have to hire guys and see that, okay, there's willingness to work and yeah, this, this guy's going to become something. And, you know, like, like, for instance, I think my stupidest mistakes I ever made was I had a Toyota Yaris I worked on. And this was because I, I, I was under a lot of pressure when I was at Toyota. There, was, there would always be like four waiters for me while the other guy had one because he didn't care. I did. I took it personal. Like, you know, I wanted to get shit done. So I had a bad habit of leaving drain plugs loose. And then the last one I left loose, it flew off on the highway and it damaged the guy's engine. Now, vehicle was under warranty, so the dealership did it for free. I mean, they got paid for it. Everyone was happy. But my manager, he was like, listen, kid, I love your energy. You know, you're, you're, you got something special in you, but you got to stop this shit. I like that you work fast, but you got to double check your work. If we, this shit happens again, you're gone. Never happened again. Yeah. You know, I just started and I work like that still today. I don't care what I'm doing before I go. I go and give it that double check over, you know? I mean, and I, and I try and do that 100%. Absolutely. But yeah. sometimes, like I said, when I'm trying to hop back and forth to person to person, you know, if they need something or whatever it is, I'll admit I, I do forget things sometimes. But yeah. you know what? I'll, I'll think about it after... You know, I try and think about it before the car is out the door. Yeah. Did I get everything? 
Do you ever go out in the parking lot and Abs- with I have, the wrench absolutely. and check the drain plug? Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I have, I've done that. You know what? I'd rather look like an idiot now yeah. than look like a complete idiot later when have that guy's ever, getting towed back. Have you ever gone to a customer's house to torque down their wheels? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've done that too. Absolutely. I've done yeah. that in the parking lot. Yeah, I've done that. Yeah. Because I've actually done that. Followed them home. Well, I, I found out where they. Well, not followed them, but like found out where they live. Yeah. Didn't even call them and tell them. Just went there, torqued the wheels, <laughs> just to be sure. Hey, that's good customer service. And they look. Hello, that. sir. How you doing? You're just jerking on your wheels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With you know what? The on. whole time there, when I was there, I was just praying, please alarm, don't go off, don't go off, don't go off. Captain Torque. Two o'clock oh at night. <laughs> yeah, two o'clock at night. It was. You know what? It was. That's what it is. Hey, that's though, a good right? name for him, Captain Torque. Captain Torque. That's the. That's the thing, though, man. It's and that's that's huge for me because I remember being at being at that same active green and Ross. Yeah. Watching one of the techs because all he used to do was a torque stick. That was it. Never hand torqued anything ever and yeah. it always bothered me and that was probably why one of my main reasons today why I make sure everything gets hand torqued before it goes Yeah, and I watched him torque a Honda Accord or Honda Civic it was Yeah, and then where we were it was underneath a bridge you had to go right it was yeah. The, uh, yeah yeah I used to work across from exactly. there at the yeah, Honda yeah. dealership so we watched the guy get out because we were I think it was like dead that day or whatever but he torqued the wheel he put the wheel on with the torque stick Drives down the road and literally we just hear a, <laughs> and we just look out the door, yeah, and we see this car and the wheels just rolling yeah. down the street, yeah, and he's just on the ground. He gets out of the car, and looks, oh, what the, f-? you know, yeah, yeah, and I'm just like, I just looked at Buddy and I was just like, that was your car, wasn't it? And he's just, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what's crazy? Like all the times I worked at the dealership. We never, we used to use torque sticks. Never, never hand, never no, hand torque? Really? No. Yeah. It's, it's, and like now that I think about it, that's insane. It is. It's but crazy. Every dealer Some people I just worked rely was, on those, right? It's, I don't know. I, I, you know, like, I can't. for instance, the, when I had, when, you know, when we put the shop together, you know, I kind of looked at every little thing and I, it probably wasn't me that suggested hand torquing because I wasn't used to it. I'll be honest. I wasn't used to that. I'm used to these torque sticks. Torque sticks are amazing. They do their job. They over torque, but the and wheel's not flying off. Unless your air pressure is low. Yeah. If, and, and, and you know what? Come on. Do you know when your gun's not up to par? Of course. But then some right of the away. young guys will not know that because they're like, no, they dug, don't. Dug, so, dug, dug. They're yeah. like, mm. ugga duggas, baby. Ugga duggas. That's yeah. all you need. Sometimes. But, and, but some guys don't know the sound of a gun when it's yeah, low. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Experience just, is a key. Just, Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I and mean, how long have you been in this now? Long time, man. Well, 17, 17 18, 18, 18 right? years. So yeah. Almost 20 years. Yeah. And it, you know what, man? It makes a difference. Like when I work Absolutely. on a car now, it's like, it's like, I'm, it's water. Like I'm just, I'm but, cruising, and, and you know, everything that, is just. But that's the thing though, right? There's some things that you know that other, other guys wouldn't even think of. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, like I see what they do and, and it's a regular mind thing. you, uh, I'll do some dumb things too. I'll make a bad call. And part of it is like when I come into the shop and help out, I'm just trying to make things move. Yeah. But like I see what these guys, for instance, I'll see them try to do a smoke test and it's like six, four hours in and I'm like, bro, what are you doing? Did you close the vent on that evap canister? No. Ooh, what? What's that? And I'm like, <laughs> how do you not understand this? Yeah. EVAP system. Yeah, like, lot, it's e- so simple. You know what simple. I find is a lot of techs don't know anything about EVAP systems. Yeah. I don't know why. Tr- well, I I think the number one problem with in not our e- not even techs here. don't read. They don't read. Tech A and Tech B. Yes, Tech A <laughs> does not like to read. Tech no, B loves tech to B read likes everything. To read. Exactly. Yeah. And Tech B will always be a better technician because he's reading, he's understanding. Do you know they don't have any of that on the test anymore? Yeah, none of, there's not a single. Well, they, there's not a single Tech A Tech B question. I learned from Tech A. I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're in the front. Good. Okay, guys. So yeah, no, I'm gonna miss been, you guys. Uh, I'll be gone for a month, know, maybe right? more. If you guys are, I'm sure you'll be gone for more. Yeah, you'll be fine. If you guys are good, you're if the in shop good is, hands. you're in good hands. Yeah, yeah this we'll year definitely. I might this have year. to get a co-op kid beating stick again, and you know. You, you like that. It's great, funny, actually. I told the co-op kid about that, and he's like, oh, where did it go? And I was like, someone threw it out. He's like, I can make you another one. I'm like, oh. I'm like, you you want what? And I'm like, do you need punishment or something? He's like, oh, I don't mind. I'm like, <laughs> cut, <laughs> cut, cut. No, that's funny shit. That's funny shit. That's funny shit. Yeah, that's funny shit. I don't care. Hey, safe. Um, yeah, hey, so, safe. so I'm, I'm thinking about something. Sorry to cut that? you off. You know, Andrew and I have been thinking about this. Uh, 
What do you think about a rental program for every customer? A what? Rental program. Like we hook them up with rentals from Enterprise. Yeah. Do like an oil change. Every customer that every comes customer. in, make sure they get into a rental. Please. Premium black rentals. Oil changes. Tire, tire swap, repairs. Tire repairs. Tire repairs. Sir, rental. I'm so sorry. Uh, I know everyone's standing around in the shop, but like, you need a rental need because a rental. this tire repair is has to be We're done. We're going back right. to the way we come back at the end of the day. Well, when you guys do a <laughs> tire repair, right? Don't you let it like ha the car has to sit on the hoist for eight hours for it to you take seal it for up. lunch? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So I'm gone for a month. I'm gonna be missing a bunch of. A bunch of the bunch of the show. I'll be yeah. watching from over there, and um, yeah, you guys have a great time. And I think Andrew, you're gonna be awesome. It's awesome to have you on, man. You're you're you do a, did an awesome job. So this I, think, I think we'll do well. This is my first podcast. How how Ever? is it? Ever. How's 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 it feel? I'm not even gonna lie. Before you guys started doing this, I had no idea what the hell it was. You thought it was pretty lame, eh? I didn't even. I thought it was only for iPods for some reason. iPods. Mm -hmm. There you go. Because those were a thing way back when. <laughs> I literally thought that's what this was for. I had no idea what it was. Yeah, it's it's just, honestly, it's nice to come on and talk. And we, we have a voice in our industry. Whether it's going to be five people listening, but soon 10, soon 100. We, we want to grow this. And at the end of the day, like, you know what? We need a voice. Simple mm. as that. And the best thing we can do is talk about issues and problems and try to bring the right people on to make some changes. Yeah, absolutely. The discussion. All so. right. Well, that's it, guys. Thanks for uh, joining our podcast. And thanks for tuning in. Have Next a good week. night. See ya.